culture at NBC News continue to come out following yesterday's surprise firing of Matt Lauer, the longtime host of the Today Show. In the wake of his firing, NBC head Andrew Lack released a statement saying that the sexual harassment complaint against Lauer was, quote, the first complaint about his behavior in the over 20 years he's been at NBC. But now other reports say that is false. It's a lie. A detailed investigation published yesterday by Variety says multiple women indeed complained to NBC News executives about Lauer's behavior over the years, but they were ignored. Robin Satuta and Elizabeth Wegmeister wrote the Variety story, the often quoted one, and they join us uh, tonight. Um, so, Elizabeth, first to you, the, the statements from NBC changed. It was noted a lot today. The statements yesterday, the first one said, you know, there have been no complaints that we're aware of. And the second one said that current management has been aware of. Is that a significant change and what would account for that? You know, that's actually what we had been hearing consistently when we were reporting this, that they kept saying at NBC, the current management, the current regime. Uh, Ramin and I, as we reported this story, we spoke to many different sources, many different women who have been there for ranging years of Lauer's career. So we have spoken to women that were there from the current, uh, you know, the current uh, regime and the old regime. So with NBC saying that they were only aware of one claim, to us, really, whether it's the current or the old regime doesn't really matter because we had heard that there were multiple claims. Yeah, and I mean, so far you have the definitive account, I think, that I've seen uh, of what was going on there. Thank uh, you, so, Sarah. I mean, why haven't we heard directly from Andy Lack or Noah Oppenheim, who's the head of the news division, on this, to, to publicly clarify, to sit down and explain what they knew? I think that's a fair question to ask as a journalist, and I think that um, as a, two reporters that have been covering this story um, pretty aggressively, we would like to interview either of them. So if either of them would like to sit down with us to talk about the statement that was put out yesterday and the use of the word current um, executives, that would be great. And current well, management, I, that you, would be great. You'd like to interview them, of course, so would yeah. I. But I'd also think, since you have the biggest repository we know of, of information on the subject, they'd want to interview you too for their internal investigation. Have they called you? They have not. And Tucker, this, going back to that um, use of the word current management, um, yeah. according to our discussions with NBC, they are actually defining that in a very narrow circle of only a few people. And so according to our reporting, there are people that work at the Today Show, staffers, producers, um, anchors, current and previous anchors um, of the Today Show that were aware that there had been complaints about Matt Lauer's alleged con conduct toward women that made women uncomfortable and where he sexually harassed women that he worked with. Yeah, I mean, I think I think your piece nails that. I mean, it's just it's really clear in reading it um, that you, you have the goods in that. What's interesting, though, this is, by my count, the third event at NBC and NBC News where we were supposed to get some kind of internal investigation on the results. You first had the leaking of the excess Hollywood tape during the last campaign, and then the question of, you know, why did Andy Lack and Noah Oppenheim squelch the Harvey Weinstein story? And we haven't really gotten a straight answer on either one of those, or have we? Have I missed it? No, we don't have an answer on either one. Do you, do you expect that we're going to get a clear accounting in this case? I think that, I think that we may not get a clear account unless unless staffers start to talk about what's going on. I think, I think right. it's important, to, and, and there, are questions to see, there are questions about if the Ronan Farrow um, story didn't air because of these allegations. There are questions about what NBC staffers knew at what time. There are questions about um, why this conduct was allowed to go on for so long. And these are all things that we're reporting. Yeah. What we will say, too, is we have had, since our story is posted, we have had many more people reach out to us and encourage us to continue to look into not just Matt Lauer, but NBC as a whole. And of course, we are going to be doing that. Yeah. I, mean, I know a lot of people who work there, uh, and some of them are good people, and they're horrified by this. Elizabeth, just sum up quickly the, the, the tone of the conversations that you're having with NBC employees now. The conversations that we are having with NBC employees, is that what you said? Yeah. What's, I mean, what's their view of this? It looks, from your reporting, like the network covered up abuse that was going on for an awfully long time. How do people who work there feel about that? People are really shocked right now. I mean, when Matt Lauer was fired yesterday, we spoke to many sources. We're not going to say if we spoke to people, you know, currently within NBC or former NBC employees, but people were really shocked 
that he was fired because of the power that he held there. They really never thought that he would go away. And of course, with that comes the people that would be protecting Matt Lauer, who would be his bosses. So people there are really shocked. And I think that they're also waiting for answers, as Ramin said. Yeah. I mean, it's relatively easy to fire Matt Lauer. It's the executives who protected him, I think, might be more interesting. Ramin, Elizabeth, thank you. Great reporting. Thank you. Thank really you. a public service. Matt Lauer's firing was a surprise, but somebody here at Fox said months ago there were predators lurking over there. She joins us next. Matt Lauer's firing the other day surprised most people, but not everyone. Melissa Francis co-hosts Fox's After the Bell, which is a great show. All the way back in April of this year, she said several television networks were full of sexual predators and that managers knew exactly who those predators were. Melissa Francis has been in TV a long time, so she would know. She joins us tonight. <laughs> not that long, but, but yeah, long careful, enough to careful, know. Tucker. Yeah. So, so you said, I remember exactly when you said this. Yeah. Just restate what you said and explain why you said it. So I had the bad fortune of going out to promote my book, Lessons from the Prairie, the day after Bill O'Reilly was fired from our network. So when yeah. I went to other networks to do the tour, and Hoda and Kathy Lee were kind enough to have me on their morning show, yeah. one of the questions everyone asked me, which is fair, we would do the same thing, they said to me, what the heck is going on over at Fox? And I said, you know, we're going through a period that's really painful, um, you know, and we're embarrassed by what's going on and we're working yeah. on it, but I have something to tell you. Why you're throwing stones at us and saying, is this part of the Fox culture? Does it, what does it have to do with what's going on over here? I think you know that your network is full of predators as well, as are all of them. Um, yeah. These people exist at every single network, and I could tell you who they are, and I bet you know who they are. And, you know, I said this to a lot of different news outlets as I went so out there. Yeah. And, um, you know, at the time, I have to say, when I was at NBC, uh, you know, I had colleagues who I knew of who were assaulted by people sexually and you know, one woman who was a friend of mine came to me in tears and I said, you need to go report this. I've seen you in tears after this incident. I would be happy to support you. Um, and she said, I don't think they'll do anything about it. And I said, well, call Gloria Allred. We're in the media. You know, have a news conference, stand out there on the street corner. And this woman in particular, who I have a ton of respect for, said, and I'll never work in this industry again. And I've worked really hard to get to this point, And I don't want to throw away my whole career. And there were others who were assaulted and who were harassed. And those people, some are still at NBC, and others have gone on to the other big networks. What about and are what about the people who com who committed uh, these acts? Those the are the people, was, yeah. Uh, the, and they're still at yes. NBC, yeah. And the other networks. I mean, I want to be clear: yeah. it's not an NBC problem. It's not no, a Fox problem. No, that's right. It's a world. I think we're learning. It's not about any political persuasion. It's not about a network. It's not about. I mean, this is one of our makeup artists said. You know, this is happening at the post office. This is happening at the, you know, sanitation department. It's everywhere, but people are paying attention to it in certain industries because it's more interesting. But I would say this, the people who committed these acts still work at these networks. And yeah. these women have been afraid to come forward. They need to know that they can. My husband said to me at the time, why haven't more women come out at other networks? And I said, I don't know. I hope it comes to that. I hope they feel like they'll be heard and they come out. But those men still work there. And I, I think they're, I'm sure their names are come out. It's not my yep. place to name them because I wasn't the one assaulted. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm fully yeah. aware of what you're talking about. Melissa, yeah. thank you. 